guys welcome back to my channel I am bunny and I am here to share with you 10 things I really wish I would have known before I went to Seattle start off by telling you a little bit about my wonderful Seattle adventure. I had wanted to go to Seattle for so long, like so long. I had started at like a year and a half in advance just googling places that might be of interest and getting so giddy and excited and I had like this huge list of places that I wanted to go. It was ridiculous how many places I really truly wanted to go in Seattle and then I got there and uh, life changed a little bit. Now if you didn't happen to see my Seattle adventures please make sure that you check out the um box somewhere on one of these sides over here and you can check out both of the episodes where I had a really really good time and I learned a lot of really interesting lessons. The first thing I learned about Seattle is if you are not a traffic kind of person Seattle is not for you. No 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 it's not for you. I've driven all across the country and done all sorts of cool things in all sorts of unique, interesting, very packed places, and never have I experienced traffic quite like Seattle. Now there are a few things that I learned about this traffic, however. I first of all didn't expect it, and that was the first thing. It was like, ah! And then I learned that had I have known this in advance, I could have planned a little bit differently on my navigation of the city. There are several different ways that you can get around the traffic, and I had no idea. I ended up cutting my trip short because I grew frustrated. How frustrated, you ask? Well, it was bad. It was very bad. It just, <laughs> I felt suffocated. One of the most popular ways that people get around in Seattle is actually by foot. And had I known where I was going, this would have been an awesome thing, but I did not know where I was going. And for some reason, all of the places that I wanted to go had a distance that was a little bit more sizable than me just walking around and feeling comfortable doing so. So, the other options that exist are light rail. I had no idea. Also, more commonly used Uber and Lyft are available, and I probably would have used that if I would have felt a little bit more confident and comfortable in the location that I was parked. Because um, number two is definitely parking. Parking can become really interesting really quickly because of the traffic. How you ask? How? How is it interesting? What's different? How is it any different than New York City? What's up? Does it cost more? What's going on? The price of parking wasn't actually that terrible. It's very comparable to other cities and that part wasn't the problem. It was that I didn't know how long it was then going to take with all the traffic to get to the next destination and how long I needed to pay for the meter. So if I went to one location and parked, would my car get towed if I wasn't back in time? Would I get a ticket in another state? Not to mention, that plays us into uh, part three. Part three is the fact that they have a lot of property theft, like vehicle theft, things like that. So you don't wanna just go park anywhere. This is going to apply a lot toward people who travel like I do. I carry a lot of things in my car because I'm sustaining myself for months on end sometimes, and I have to carry everything with me. It is not, even a thought process for me to be able to load up all of those things and take them with me in an Uber. So, so far we have traffic, parking, and property theft. Those three things right there are enough to just kind of make you go, Whew, okay, so what do I do? That is why number four is a big one. And I had no concept as to how big this could be in a city like Seattle. Planning in advance, knowing where you can park for a longer amount of time that is also going to be safe for your vehicle. That's a huge thing. And it's all something that you can find out simply by looking into it and researching a little bit. I learned this kind of after the fact. And I wish I would have known. Another huge benefit to planning in advance, you save huge if you're planning on staying in a hotel. Staying in a hotel can get quite expensive especially in a city. And a lot of times whenever you find those deals that have a lot lower price point, those are over in the suburbs. If you stay in the suburbs, it can take up to two hours with traffic to get back into the city. So planning in advance can help you to get a lower price on your hotel. It can help you to find parking if you're an RV or your car, or you're just wanting to spend a few extra hours in the city. These are all things that can be 
easily done simply by planning in advance. We're halfway through the list now guys and number five is one that you can take advantage of across the country in a lot of major cities. It's called the City Pass. City Passes are a huge asset where you can do all sorts of cool things for a much lower price point. Basically it's a bundle. What they do is they take some of their leading attractions and they put them all together and they sell them to you for a price point which kind of seems high but when you start adding things up it's a huge savings and discount. Number six, the signature Starbucks. Starbucks originally was founded in Seattle. And that in itself is just one of those things that you could probably take every girl in riding boots, leggings, and an oversized shirt and go, here's the pumpkin spice latte, and she'd go, oh, yay! So my tip is to not go to the original Starbucks. I know, I know, it sounds weird because I like to do things in their signature city, but I would not, not go to the original Starbucks. And there's a reason for this. There is a line and it's stupid and you're not going to be able to truly enjoy the Starbucks experience because there's just too much hustle and bustle. Now there is a unique Starbucks. However, in Seattle, it's like the Starbucks reserve. Pay a little bit more, but it's an experience. You get to see the beans and the brew and all this stuff on like a huge scale and it's got these big copper vats and it's really cool, but it's not the original one. So if you go into that one by accident and think it's the right one, it's not. Another thing I learned when I was in Seattle is that a raincoat is your best friend. Not an umbrella, a raincoat. An umbrella almost is the sign of I am a tourist. Here, let me pull my pants up to my chest, carry a camera, and uh, wear slouch socks. That's basically the same thing. People in Seattle typically wear a raincoat. So invest in a raincoat because it does rain a lot, but it's not like a rain like you get in other places where it's like a downpour. It's just a drizzle, just enough to annoy you. And uh, there's no reason for you to pop out this big umbrella, walk around like a human target, and just let everybody know that you're a tourist. Speaking of being a tourist, there are tours and I do encourage you to take them. Number eight is definitely indulge yourself with a tour. Not only does this allow you access to a lot of attractions, you also a lot of times get to skip the line, which is kind of cool. You have buses that actually take you around, which completely gets you out of that whole traffic thing in the first place. And uh, you have somebody who actually knows what they're talking about telling you about it. And so you get this really interesting look at Seattle that most would not have had they have not taken a tour. That doesn't mean you had to look like a tourist though. Now, number nine, there are a lot of homeless people in Seattle. A lot, like tons. Just in the Washington area in general, as well as the Oregon area, there is a hotbed for homelessness. And I don't say that as like a sarcastic thing, when you are there, it is next level. I have never seen so many people who are homeless. It's a real population epidemic and I'm not sure what has caused it, but just know that if you are traveling to these areas, you will see a lot of homeless people. And a lot of times people feel very threatened by homeless people or pressured by homeless people and you don't have to. If someone comes up to you and asks you for money or anything like that, you can say no and walk away. If someone is obviously harassing you, bothering you. They have tons of police that you can call if you do feel threatened. However, for the most part, people just mind their business. Just be aware, it is a problem. Last but not least, number 10, the thing that I would definitely tell you if you're going to Seattle, be flexible. The reason why I tell you to be flexible is because traffic is crazy. The lines sometimes are long. Depending on what kind of event that you're going to or what kind of place that you're visiting, you will want to make sure that you're able to fully appreciate it. I went to the Museum of Pop Culture. I parked in a two hour parking lot. I spent three and a half hours in there and I felt like I rushed the last two exhibits because I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't pay for parking. I'm gonna get towed. Give yourself flexibility and time. This is a huge thing. You're experiencing this maybe for the only time that you might in life. And so make sure that you're enjoying it. 
Thank you guys for joining me for the top 10 things I wish I would have known before I went to Seattle. I hope at least a couple of these have hit home for you and been beneficial. I do love to share these videos because it is very helpful for me to see videos like this. And I hope that the more videos that we all create, the more that it helps people to prepare for their awesome trips so they can avoid some of the headaches and have more of the fun. Until next time, guys. Bye.